Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda Walden and today we are covering the vibrant world of spring fashion trends for 2024. The season that is all about that everyday elegance, embracing serenity in soft hues, but also making bold statements. We'll talk about unique textures and patterns and maybe how you can kind of choose your lane. How specifically these trends have been deciphered is looking at the runways, those big fashion houses, Gucci, Chanel, Loewe, and so many more. That is how the high street kind of gets their hands into what is next for them. So I'll also talk to you about how to incorporate this in your everyday style because me personally, I am desperate for a wardrobe clean out and I really find that looking at trends or maybe looking at kind of some inspiration for the season ahead helps me decide on what to keep and what to say goodbye to. So if that's you too, this is the perfect video. We're gonna also talk about some new styling methods too. So whether you're looking to elevate your daily style, a touch of whimsy, make a sustainable choice, we're gonna cover it all. So grab your favorite bevy, sit back, maybe do a chore, and I'm gonna tell you how you can incorporate these trends into your everyday style in 2024. Let's go. The first one we're gonna mention is what I think is maybe one of the most important, and that is to elevate your everyday basics. And this trend is absolutely transforming the everyday items. It boils down to design, how we care for our items, and just overall style of said item. It's fashion houses like Kate, JW Anderson, Stella McCartney, Celine, that showcase tank dresses, sculptural organza, delicate pleating on trench coats, and impeccably cut tuxedo shirts. All really cool takes on a basic to just kind of elevate it. And for us, maybe just who are running out to the grocery store and doing things out and about, adding that little bit of a twist. So a classic crisp white shirt, but with a statement trouser or layering a sculptural tank over top of a turtleneck. More elevated looks with those basics and mixing and matching. We'll talk about layering in a bit too. The first color we're gonna cover in the season is going to be soft blue. And soft sky blue shades have predominantly been seen on the runways, which truly tickles my fancy because I love a blue. I think it's so sophisticated. And brands like Alberta Ferretti, Versace, Stella McCartney, Proenza Schooler embracing a monochrome look to really a cool blue styling. Incorporating soft blue shades is so easy in our wardrobes because blue is obviously a neutral if you make it one, it just depends on the hue. I think a light blue or a really kind of subdued blue can just be so incredibly elegant and pretty and beautiful. And you can bring this out in your accessories. And if you are a true neutral girly, you just like white and neutrals, especially in the spring summer, you can just add a pop of blue in an accessory. Number three on the docket is to elevate your jaw so level it up. Another basic that can definitely move more into a stylish element. And this trend is just kind of moving beyond those basic joggers. It's designers like JW Anderson, Christopher Esper, Dior, Saint Laurent, Christian Siriano, showcasing comfortable yet chic alternatives. So what does this mean for us? It means getting out of those basic joggers, having alternatives like a wide leg pant, Collots as well coming back. Actually, capris are going to be a big one, especially spring, summer. And you can maybe pair this with a fitted top or a sneaker, comfortable yet chic outfit. I found some really good ones at Cost, Reformation. I have the Mason pant, which are honestly the worst when it comes to ironing, but when they're done, they look really good. Uh, ones that are a bit more manageable are the Abercrombie Sloan pant. I've been loving those trousers, kind of moving beyond a jogger. But on the other side of things, cargo pants are going to be absolutely huge this year, especially for utilitarian style, but we are elevating them. It is not the cargo pants of the past, no, no. These have incredible pleats, especially if you iron them down. I've been eyeing these ones up from Dish. Next up is getting nitty with it, which makes me so happy as well, because intricate knits, feral sets, as well as playful cardigans. Those are beautiful in the spring. Bottega Veneta, Molly Goddard, JW Anderson as well showing this again. That trend basically celebrates the detailed knitwear, but with a modern twist. Coastal grandmother with a modern twist. Embracing intricate knits by wearing feral sweaters, cardigans, crew neck sweaters, easy to layer, even with like a preppy style, like a white shirt, pairing jeans with a casual look, layering a knit over top of a dress. So easy to bring knitwear, especially into the spring. Shoulder seasons are perfect for knitwear. And I would say if you've never done it before, try an oversized knit this year just to mix things up. And that mixes great with number five, I think we're 
one, which is layer it up. Creative layering is also kind of combining different textures and lengths. So a long shirt under a sweater, another shirt where you have a cropped jacket, a laid back yet intentional look. And I have also been seeing, and I'm sure you have too, the polo shirt is also coming back. And Miu Miu has done some layering on their runway. They featured it predominantly on theirs. And it's kind of that resurgence of 90s preppiness, a classic basic, like a long sleeve under a polo could be a really fun way to layer for spring. Just those temperatures really allow for it. And even like something I've done today, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Next up, I'm calling this one on the fringe because fringe details have been like kind of dipping their toe back in, but I would say we haven't seen them fully come back yet. Maybe this year is the year. Fringe details are making a comeback maybe because of the 90s inspiration and adding movement and texture to garments. Fashion houses like Prada, Alexander McQueen, Gucci, Burberry, all incorporating fringe into their designs for a subtle accent to that full head to toe look. For myself, when I think about actually styling up fringe, I know I'm gonna need to do it through an accessory, specifically through a bag, for example. But there's many ways you can think about adding fringe to your wardrobe, whether that be on the back of a jacket or even through a skirt. You just really have to figure out what works for you. I don't currently have fringe in my wardrobe. I don't know if I'll add it, but maybe if I'm out thrifting and I see a really cool suede jacket or some type of bag, it could be a way to add a little bit of Western flair. I mean, if Beyonce can do it, so can I. Another huge one on the runways has been playing with proportions and specifically the waistline. A couple years past, we have been seeing those low waistlines. Those are still gonna be here with Y2K fashion, but because 90s is really making that resurgence, the high-waisted bottoms and overall accents from Loewe, Rick Owens, Burberry, updating those classic trench coats to have a low-slung waist, drop waist, another big thing in the season. It's about playing with those silhouettes and the scale. So for us, high-waisted pants or high-waisted skirt with maybe a crop top, emphasizing that silhouette, hitting that smaller part in our waistlines, alternatively trying a dress or a coat with an oversized accent, like a large collar or buttons, or even that drop waist in a dress, which I do feel like is just so romantic comedy, beautiful and feminine. We're gonna talk a little bit more about 90s resurgence, but shoulder pads as well is a fun way to play with some of those proportions and even a way to take a really basic outfit and make it a little bit more upscale and oomphy. Not oofy, but oomphy. Okay, sporty chic, sportswear. Elements of sportiness paired with more tailored and festive pieces that are gonna be a bit more balanced in look, I hope. I feel like this could be a smorgasbord for me. Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Miu Miu, Wales Bonaire showcase skirts, blazers, and satin pants combined with athletic staples, which has me thinking. In all honesty, I don't know if this one's for me, but I could convince myself in this paragraph because I think that maybe the polo shirt coming back, that preppy look, mixed with sporty elements, tailored pieces, that could kind of balance well. And I will say I do love a tracksuit underneath a blazer or the tracksuit underneath the wool coat season. That served me really well, something monochromatic as a base. But what I don't see myself in is like one of those, you know, footballers wearing their tracksuits and then having a blazer over top. I feel like that would be very weird. So it all depends on how you want to mix this in to your everyday style. You can also add that sporty kind of flair in your shoes, a sneaker mixed with a really, you know, beautiful suit or something like that. That's definitely a way you could add a sporty touch to your outfit and not gonna lie, a touch of comfort. Next up is sheer delight, sheer fabrics created from light, airy, subtly revealing looks. Designers like Dior Fendi incorporating sheer materials into their collections, adding a touch of no doubt elegance, but also sensuality. And femininity has been a big focus. I adore a touch of femininity and how bold I'm willing to go with this trend? I'm not sure yet, but time will tell. Incorporating some sheer fabrics into the everyday could look like a sheer blouse or a skirt, skirts with hot pants, but I'm gonna say, I really think that this is gonna be more of an outfit I would wear out, and embracing that light, airy look would be beautiful depending on the scene. Maybe you're on a beach or something like that, or you're going to an event or a date night where it really makes sense. I just don't know if I'm gonna be wearing a sheer skirt with hot pants, 
to go on my grocery run, but never say never. The second color I will mention that has been featured an absolute ton. If blue is not your shade, maybe green is. Various shades of green from soft pastels to rich emeralds have definitely been predominant. Brands like Bottega Veneta, Loewe showcasing green in their collections and green just says power to me in some way. We've been talking about red, red last year with the tomato red Italian girl summer, European girl summer, but then it also moved into the fall winter with more of that maroony oxblood red. Now that we're moving more into these blues and greens, to me, it really symbolizes renewal and connection to nature. Adding green to your wardrobe, you just have to decide whether it is up your street, pastel green in a blouse, an emerald dress, green accents. You can really just decide and if if green isn't your bag, you can maybe figure that out through just a subtle scarf or a bag or mix and match this color with other colors to make it really fun and punchy or a monochromatic look for a fresh, just natural inspired outfit. I feel like a monochromatic look is a fail safe for me to just instantly look chic. And if you're unsure about the color, just go for the pop like in the shoe, in the bag, or like I mentioned earlier, a scarf, always a fail safe to see if it fits with your complexion. Okay, so we have arrived, the return of 90s, the nostalgic revival. I've already mentioned it a couple of times, but this revival is definitely gonna be a focus of this year. We're thinking flannel shirts, full on 90s minimalism, just like those elevated classics. And this is clean lines, monochromatic looks, simple silhouettes, they are back. Slip dresses, basic tees, even straight leg pants, I would say in neutral colors, can definitely embody that understated elegance of the 90s, but it was also just fun with those proportions. So as a Canadian girly, I will say, I love watching YouTube videos of girlies around the world. And I love when this comes out of their mouth. Today, I'm going to wear a Canadian tuxedo because today Canadian tuxedos are very much a part of the nineties with those high waisted pants, a little denim top. I'm ready to hop back on board. I'm not going to lie. And the nineties revival just feels like it's got a subtle layering, a subtle elegance. It's going to be really easy to style for the spring. I'm also excited to see more slingbacks in the shops, lower heel slingbacks, pointed structural, adding some elegance. I think those are going to be really fun to add to my wardrobe this season. The one that contradicts them all, bold prints and patterns, eye catching prints, patterns, dominating the runways as well. But you have to look at the brands. The brands are Versace, Dolce & Gabbana, Richard Quinn. Those are all designers that love to showcase abstract design, floral motifs, and even bold graphics. So when you are watching this video and you're thinking, okay, Amanda, what are you talking about? You're saying every single trend is going to be trending. Well, you really just have to figure out what's your lane and kind of what's your designer. And then you will kind of lead down to what's your personal style and discovery in what these quote unquote trends are. So to make a statement with bold prints, you can definitely wear a printed dress or a printed top paired with a solid bottom. Again, I love a monochromatic match set. I was just in Turks and Caicos recently and these are the things that I wore, which I think would definitely accomplish this trend. And I love to be adventurous as well, but I've not adventured out to match different patterns together. So if that's you, let me know in the comments. I can't wait to see how you're styling it this spring. My audio failed out on me on this and I forgot to put my rings on. So apologies if there's a slight lighting change. Three left and this is one that I slightly nodded to before and that is utility chic. Functional yet fashionable pieces with a utilitarian edge that we've definitely seen in collections like Prada, Burberry, Stella McCartney and cargo pants and multi pocketed jackets are gonna be key pieces of this trend. Now for myself incorporating this into my outfits, I definitely have a more feminine style. So I'm so curious how I'm gonna work it in but I do have a pair I can't wait to bring in. But for yourself, it could be, yeah, that cargo pant, the multi-pocketed jacket, even a belt bag could work really, really well. I love the functionality of these pieces. And I will say that cargo pants are not what they once were. I now have been drawn into some of these cargo, I would say trends, but I don't know, I could see these being a bit more timeless because they are also hyper tailored. And if you're pressing the pockets down properly, it just adds a little bit of interest, a little bit of texture to your outfit, and as well, a little bit of utility, which is always very helpful when you're out on the go. This has been the year of girl core. Okay, we have had Taylor. Beyonce's coming in full force with some new country vibes. We've also had Barbie, and that means that romantic ruffles are going to be once again, a big part of the conversation, girl 
Delcor. Feminine flouncy ruffles for spring though, specifically designed by Valentino, Rodart, as well as Simon Rocha. This trend has been so beautiful to watch. The softness, the femininity, and truly just the romance. So for ourselves, adding this balance of femininity, we could definitely balance some of the ruffles out with a basic piece on the bottom. But the trend, kind of really takes hold with the rose. The rose has been such a big feature on so many runways. And I will say it could be an applique that you kind of just tie around your neck or appliques on your dress or even a pattern. And actually, guys, I am debating on this dress for my birthday. It is officially my birthday month. Hello, March. And so I would love to hear your opinion before I pull the trigger, but I think she's really pretty and would definitely align with my personal style, but also this trend. So let me know what you think. Last but not least, I am so excited about this one and it is just simply metallic accents. To think about it for spring summer though specifically, that's it. It's brands like Balmain as well as Saint Laurent that have incorporated metallic fabrics and details into their collections. It's just a touch of luxury and it kind of has you feeling like, oh, yeah, that's pretty special. It's metallics in our wardrobe that we can have obviously in accessories, but also in tops, skirts, and shoes too. We can talk about that. Pairing it with neutral colors is always really nice. And metallics as a note too, this is another kind of nod to the 90s, oversized jewelry specifically in gold and silver. My rose gold, Michael Kors knockoff that I bought on Canal Street in New York City, that is still gonna be waiting in the wings this year. Probably not gonna bring that out actually don't know where it is. Think about metallics in bringing it into kind of the little pieces in your wardrobe. For me, it's also shoes. Spring, summer, I love a metallic shoe. They're so elegant. I think strappy sandals, a low kitten heel, and these are the ones I have been debating because they will go with absolutely everything. And I just think they are so ladylike and feminine. And again, just so incredibly versatile. You guys, I have loved this chat. I hope you did too. Let me know if you like this more laid back style. I'll always go absolutely ham for the one for the annual report of trends or the quote unquote trends coming down from the runways to the high street. But I genuinely am so excited to tackle my wardrobe clear out now. I feel like I just have a deeper understanding of what is going to be in style. And I'm really excited to style things in different ways. For example, like this little uniform that I've created with this turtleneck. This is actually from my mom, a little hand-me-down and then a Zara shirt. Um, ways to find to layer better in the spring and the shoulder seasons is a lot of fun because the temperatures just kind of allow for it. So do me a favor, like this video if you made it this far, that would be the absolute best, helps my little nook of the internet, but also try and find a new combination in your own wardrobe just by shopping the pieces you have on how you could layer it up for spring. I hope that you are as excited for spring dressing as I am, but without further ado, I shall see you in the next one. Bye guys, love ya. All right, you look fine. Alexander McQueen, Gucci, boo-boo, boo, -boo. boo <laughs>